Last time on Bass Funk. What if we banded together, formed our own super the grand sister alliance, and fought back against Lady Nim? They were saying something about looking for some wizard, Gar- Garrick the Great, something like that, and... You see a destroyed house, a bunch of items, just like weird m- miscellaneous like capsules and some kind of weird mechanical tchotchkes. You don't even know what any of them are, but you see them very clearly. We are gonna do some drawing, and we will try catching each other. You promise? I promise. The knowledge of what's happened to her husband has left her rather distressed, and I have become more concerned about the warden with each passing day. Do you think the warden's a bad guy? No. It would be too simple to say that he's a bad guy. Roland, you have heard of this house before. It's on the far side. It's abandoned, like the roof is caved in. You know someone lived before there before. Uh, all you've heard about it is that it's a wizard. The warden busted him personally, which doesn't usually happen. What was the warden busting him for? What was the crime? It looks like kidnapping and murder. You know your preserves? Yep. Any chance you get a uh, a jar of them sent out to Wolf and let them know that they're uh, the the I I got I got the jar sent over. The ghosts that are leaking out of the sacrum, as far as you can tell, all appear to be animals. Basically, creatures that couldn't be viewed as being guilty of anything that are being released. Pineapple. You open your mouth and you do not make any sounds. Is that all of us? Dora tries to talk to you. You do not talk. Oh, heck. Garrick is broken out of his hypnotic reverie because he is face down on the ground. And no- nothing immediately that you guys understand happens. But on the ground, at Roland's mercy, he has done something. Can I fly down and try to land on uh, Garrick the Great? You take 14 damage as this wave of ice slams into you. You get the, you get the sense you're just going to keep getting buffeted by ice if you try to stab him with your claws. Uh, Roland is right in front of him, so he's going to try to reach over and rip off the mask. And then you see this character's spirit animal rising up behind them, and it is a hydra. And suddenly, everything gets rewound. We all remember what happened during the first rewound section. It looks like a black grenade with a red button on top. That's what it looks like. He clicks it. Once he sees like Zo- uh, Zoe start to fall, invoke the power of the griffin into himself, causing wings to sprout out of his back, mm-hmm. catch Zo- the frozen Zoe, and immediately apply lay on hands on her. It might be worth our time to go and recuperate and rest up and heal up. As the HQ appears on the horizon, its windows and doors frozen shut, running through the snow to try to get home. Shouting out the password to get in touch with your secretary, you are only met with silence. I would say I like the the that weird anime guy's comment of I think you guys are worried for nothing. The socks will obviously keep Winnie warm. Yeah. So last week's recording session ended with Roland Hawklight saving Zoe Legrand's life, and it was very sad and awesome and good. And then everyone's like, "I gotta go," and so, <laughs> so that we left. <laughs> and then I I recorded the outro afterwards, so they didn't know. They all experienced the dread in real time with you, audience, uh, to find out that the headquarters has been frozen over. And so that's where we're going to start. We're not going to talk about Legends of the Hidden Temple this week. (laughs) We're not! That's everybody's favorite segment. It is the opening 15 minutes of Remember the 90s. See, that's why I I assumed that was why Winnie wasn't responding on the pineapple line, is that, you know, gone off to record Legends of the Hidden Temple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he hosted that, right? Yeah. I never watched that show. Which... By the way, I want to just do a little thing here really quick while everyone's listening. So Austin, keep this in the recording. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but now we have that like YouTube channel. If anybody wants to watch me talk about shit, I would do that. 
So, like, if you want to talk me, if you want to talk about gay shit, <laughs> tell me what you want to hear about gay shit, people. You just want to talk about the mechanics of polyamory when one person is a is is a goo monster. I mean, sure. <laughs> Which I say that like it's a bad thing, but that's like that is totally what the YouTube channel should be for. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Is this just a Florida thing with with the slime <laughs> fetish everyone has? <laughs> Like, unanimously, you guys just all agree? You have to keep in mind, Nick Studios was in Orlando, Florida, so... Yeah, I guess so. And also, everything's so humid and moist here all the time. We basically are slime people. Yeah. Wow, this got wildly off track from the very somber opening I thought we were going to be having. You're welcome. So Winnie's dead, right? Oh, he's totally dead. No. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Listen, I said this before. Dungeons & Dragons is really a game about trust. You guys trust me. <laughs> Not to kill beloved characters off screen without the proper buildup. And I trust you to only make a certain percentage of boner jokes in a given episode. Oh, shit. We're going to run out of our quota really quickly at this rate. Um, So you guys are dashing through the snow. On a one-horse open sleigh. <laughs> on a one-horse open sleigh. <laughs> I, was, I actually took the longest pause there. For the listeners, I edited out about a, mi- a minute of silence <laughs> before someone <laughs> responded to my prompt. Yeah. Um, you guys are running towards the headquarters. Uh, the wave of silence has still fallen over Ilium from Zoe's wild magic, which is why the last episode ended with you guys trying to call out to Winnie and it not working, which also happened during that Garrick the Great fight scene when Zoe tried to contact Winnie. It, like That doesn't work right now. So you guys don't know what is happening with him. So what do you do? So the, the, the HQ itself is frozen over how much so would you say? That's a good question. Why don't you guys make uh, investigation rolls? Yeah, that's a 27 there. Never mind, I got a two. We're good, guys. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, the dice are so benevolent with reinforcing our, our narrative. Yes. 19. All right, so here's a question real quick before I describe the results of this investigation roll, which is last episode, Zoe was frozen to what would have been her death if Roland wouldn't have caught her and then used lay on hands to heal her. Mm-hmm. How are you actually doing right now, Zoe? Because according to the game rules, you're fine. But in role play terms, are you like able to fly, walk, talk? Like, how are you actually feeling? I would think that she's trying to, to fly, but it's a very wobbled kind of flying. Like, uh, you know, when like something like you make a paper airplane, but you didn't make it very good. So when you throw it, it just kind of like, turns to one side a little too much or something like that (laughs) if roland were to telepathically call trinity to come over would zoe be opposed to sort of like resting on top of the horse so that the horse kind of carry her around while she's recovering from well being frozen i think she might just want us like walk on her own though but it'd be really cute i think her pride's taken a bit of a a bruising recently but yeah, so I guess the scene is like you guys are running across the field, Roland, you summon up Trinity, who runs over and Zoe refuses out of pride to ride the horse. Mm-hmm. You guys get up to the door and roll in with your 27 investigation check. You are absolutely certain everyone else is just freaking out because they rolled 210 and 19 is not bad, but you're 27 so high above them that you immediately scope out the situation. Uh, it doesn't look like this was done methodically. It's not like... Garrick stopped and then cast the freeze building spell. Mm. Like it looks like ice was just shooting out wildly everywhere. And so everything isn't perfectly Mm -hmm. frozen over in such a way that like the building is impassable. So you can definitely rip the door open. It would take a certain amount of strength, but I mean, Roland is pretty strong. Let's let's, we'll, we'll try to roll to see how long it takes basically. Sure. 19 on the strength check. Yeah, so Roland, you just yank the door open with your mighty strength and ice goes flying everywhere. You see also immediately, the first thing you notice is that the building itself is also full of snow and ice and stuff. It looks like an ice bomb went off around here. The surrounding areas, like the fields and the flowers are kind of frozen. And as you, I assume, enter Mm -hmm. Avant-Garde's headquarters, uh, you see that the main room is in total disarray. Bookshelves are knocked over. Papers have gone everywhere. Everything's frozen. Looks like an ice tornado went through this room. Dora is immediately going to run up to her room to check on Mr. Smooches and her crabs. Okay. Uh, So Dora runs off up the stairs. Uh, Do the rest of you want to investigate this room while she does that? 21 in my case. Yeah, one! (laughs) A 21 and a one. Zoe hits her head on something. 
So, so it's like, when did we get onion rings? I got a seven. I'm doing really badly in investigation today. It's okay. Everyone's shook. You guys just had a nearly lethal battle, which I'm sure we're going to discuss more because that fight was awesome. And are we, we Baba need- shook? <laughs> I mean, I mean, and, and I guess if we wanted to be kind of in character, the one that is probably the most battle hardened is Roland, make, which would explain him being the least shooken up by the whole exchange out of the out of the team. So. Yeah, I mean, also, I just, like, no one acknowledged that Lauren just said Baba Shook, which <laughs> has really hurt me to my core. I, I was just going to power through that pun. It's, it's, it's like, that is not a pun that deserves a response. Damn. I didn't invent it. I've seen it on the internet. No no love for gay icon, the Babadook. I know. So, Roland, you charge into the headquarters main room, and with your 21, you just take command of the scene. You're just Sherlock on the case. Uh, Veltari and Zoe kind of clamber in behind you, uh, shivering and upset and kind of uh, not immediately helpful, kind of dealing with their own things. So the first thing Roland takes into his super detective senses is that there is a giant red mess in the corner of the room. Uh, there's red splatters all over it. Uh, I, I, I'm going to walk over. I'm going to reach out, touch it uh, on my finger, bring it to my lips to confirm that it's in fact just preserves that have exploded because they froze and erupted from their jars. Yep, the freezer has exploded open, all the jars inside are ruined, and the stalker's jar is empty. Ah, crab apples. God damn it. Ah, damn it, strawberry. Uh, Upstairs, Dora, you run down the hallway to your room, you notice there's not any ice or snow up here, and you run, kick open your door, just run across the crabs, <laughs> looking for uh, Archibald J. Smooches, your snapping turtle, and you see his aquarium, and you see he has a visitor, um, because Winifred is also stuffed in the aquarium with him. <laughs> Can I pull Winnie out? Do I need to roll for that? <laughs> no, it's it's fine. Winnie's, Winnie's uh, all jammed in there, all his tentacles are noodly all around him and he's like no mr smooches no bite bad bad smooches no bite well he's not really saying that he, that's just what his motions are indicating you know his yeah telepathically you're receiving once again nobody can actually speak in this scene yet but you're getting full blast volume from winnie because he speaks through tele- telepathy i'm gonna pull him out of the aquarium and give him the biggest squishy hug Okay, S- smooches comes with because he is now dangling off of one of winifred's besocked tentacles and I'm also going to pull him off. Okay, you have <laughs> smooches and Winnie. And I give them both smooches. <laughs> <laughs> I have like bolts of fabric and shit, so I'm going to both wrap them up in something warm and bring them downstairs with me. Okay, you bundle your little friends and you're going to bring them back to the main room. You guys are uh, where Roland, you were investigating and with your 21, you, you are pretty certain your survey of this scene is that Garrick came here, something happened and... He went ape shit, mm. I think is the technical term, with ice, ice magic, and then just kind of ran off in a huff. He's no longer here, and nothing specific seems to be have been enacted. Whatever he came for, you don't think he got. Roland is going to uh, pull out a paper and a writing utensil, since he always kind of carries it for notes, place it down on the table, and starts writing out his theory as to what happened here. Dang. Um, effectively, the theory being... After the fight, Garrick retreated here in order to find information on us or do something about us. While in here, uh, he investigated the freezer, caused what we know as the stalker to get out of its captivity, which assaulted him, leading him to erratically cast ice magic all over the place and run out in a fright. (laughs) <laughs> he did him a frighten. While Roland is trying to actually be like sensible and run us down on what's going on as a group and what we need to do and what uh, Garrick the Great's been doing, mm-hmm. I'm looking around to see if the rocks are still uselessly with our group. Because <laughs> <laughs> like they've not been brought up in a while, and like I can't actually mock them out loud, but I kind of want to just be like, "And you're helping us how?" With my face. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they're. I mean, they're still here. They're trying to stay back because it's kind of awkward to just run into somebody else's ransacked house. Um, that's a kind of an awkward situation. And also just on a meta level, I don't want them to like steal your guys' thunder. So they're there if you need help. Although I do show them that Mr. Smooches is okay. Okay, Claudia holds Mr. Smooches. I put him in everybody's face and then I give him to Claudia. 
I I do I do want to try and give the rocks just a look that conveys as best I can with no words, like you've not helped us, <laughs> and this has happened to us. It's funny because uh, a cri- a criticism I've gotten of my DMing style is that I put too much emphasis on the NPCs, <laughs> and you're like, hey, could you actually fucking help NPCs? <laughs> Well, considering how much of a fight they put up to be on on the team with us, I I I just want to give them the look of, yeah, this is why going first makes us the adventurers, and why going second makes you not. <laughs> Claudia just gives you like the stink guy and tries to keep Mister Smooches from biting her actual face <laughs> off, which he is definitely trying to do. Yeah, Mister Smooches, go, Mister Smooches. That's my boy. Uh, by, by the time uh, Valtari is done looking at the rocks like that, she might turn around and see Roland's uh, writing unrealistically get more elaborate and even like a diagram of possible routes uh, being mapped out on the paper on the table. Um, but Winnie can actually work as a conduit for a conversation here because he is mm-hmm. telepathic. So when you bring him downstairs, he says to Roland, Oh my gosh, you guys, I guess guy guy was so scary and he came in and he was just breaking stuff. I let him do it, I ran upstairs. It's okay, Winnie. It looks like he might have, well, bitten off a bit more than he could chew while looking in the freezer. I don't know anything about that. He just came in and I was like, hey, what are you doing here? And I tried to like talk with his mind and it scared me. I don't know, his brain is weird. It freaked me out and I just ran away. And then he started breaking stuff. Could you elaborate on that last bit there? What was his brain? What was weird about his brain? Like, we're talking right now. Like, I reach out and we talk with my... But you said that his mind was weird. Yeah, I tried to talk to him. And it, all I saw was, like, this weird... It's hard, it's hard to explain. And he floats over and, like, takes the pen you're using and draws something on the paper. Mm. And it kind of looks like... looks almost like a star. It's a kind of symbol. That when he draws, but it's more elaborate. It's like a very stylized, filigreed star. Huh. And he says, I, "I just, I reached out to talk to him, and I, this is just what I saw. But it was like really scary and powerful. And then he started shooting ice everywhere. Like I spooked him, and then I just ran away." Can I do a religion check on that symbol? Absolutely. Twenty-seven. <laughs> Roland is killing it today. <laughs> Everyone else is very Baba shook, except for Roland, who solved the entire mystery. This, this is like this is Ro- these are Roland's two strongest skills in the game. So, so I'm just glad they're actually working for once. Yeah, religion <laughs> investigation. So, yeah, you've seen this symbol in your studies before because I mean you're a paladin, you grew up reading religious texts. Mm-hmm. So, here's what you know, and it's a bit of a story actually. I wish I could just say, oh, it's the symbol of Garrick the asshole. <laughs> this is <laughs> everyone knows about. Everyone knows this guy. Uh here here's the full story behind this symbol because the symbol is uh, a religious symbol of the god of winter. Hmm. Um so more specifically, this symbol, this icon is not a star. Uh, with your check, you actually know what it is. I was going to let you guys think it was a star. It's a snowflake. It is absolutely a snowflake. God, Skitch is really good at this. <laughs> 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 yep, it's a it's a snowflake. So what happened was, back in the old days, and this is just, you can convey this through Winnie to everyone else, mm-hmm. um, the gods created the world. Like, Palor put the sun in the sky, and Grumpsh created the orcs, and so forth. The gods created things. The god of winter, though made it cold sometimes <laughs> like mm. like like it was just a little colder for a quarter of the year and therefore he didn't really have many believers many people who prayed to them and the gods get their power from prayer so the god of winter was pretty weak and nobody really cared about him all that much but then there was a time when an army was sieging a castle during winter and they prayed to the god of war and the god of victory and the god of everything they could think of and none of them answered and because it was winter they prayed to the god of winter and so he created the first frost the actual invention of snow Hmm. which covered the invading armies starved them out and won victory for the besieged city and so that city became centered around worship of the god of winter and it greatly increased his power and this is when snow was created in the same way that once Palor created the sun it was just a new phenomena of the world 
And this symbol, the first frost, is like a story they tell about this event, but is also literally the first snowflake ever, (laughs) ever created, ever in existence. And that it is a religious artifact that is presumed to exist. And so that is what you know with the 27. You know the story, you know the symbol, and I can't really withhold anything. So you know that that snowflake exists in the world still Mm -hmm. because it is, it is so powerful that it never melted. And I guess the only other thing I would ask is would Roland have any understanding of what it means in general, if someone's mind just expressed a particular artifact in sort of its purest representation, that might be a bit too vague to extract for now, but that's sort of the other thing Roland is thinking about. Like, now he's been adding notes to his. He's like he's got his, you know, his conspiracy chart kind of drawn up here. <laughs> Always sunny. <laughs> like, look at the the red strings. <laughs> Pepe Sylvia. Yeah, you're going full Pepe Sylvia. Here's the thing. That is highly irregular. It doesn't matter how long you spend as a cleric or a paladin of the god of winter. Your mind would not project right. the first frost to anyone who wanted to talk to you. Roland's writing down like a brief listing of things like this could be an angel, some other spirit of the god itself. It could be a physical manifestation of the artifact. It could be all these things. But it's more evidence to point that there's something especially peculiar about Garrick beyond just what we know also the time travel stuff is a little weird that's a that's a side note there so yeah that unfurled very quickly in the last episode and i wasn't expecting it all to be revealed there it's just that's the way you guys you guys were rolling with really well and basically kicking his ass um but he appears to have a bunch of magic items uh veltari saw them first when she looked into wolf the troll's mind um but remember the silence fell before any of you were harmed everything that happened afterward afterwards like Roland getting bit by the hydra ghost Mm -hmm. or the ice blasts or the time reversing device all of those happened under the veil of silence which Mm -hmm. leads you to believe he did not cast them or those are either tied to his stand effectively or to artifacts or magic items that are in his possession or otherwise so it it adds to the curiousness of all this stuff uh lastly i was going to point out that he's a He's not a legit uh, character because he uses save states, and that means that his uh, <laughs> run through Ilium will not be official, uh, just as a point. He's not going to be invited to Awesome Games Done Quick this year, unfortunately. That's right. Um, but yeah, I mean, Roland slash Skitch is killing it. He's picked up on like all the clues. I think you guys actually have <laughs> a very good handle on this mission. So, I mean, we just don't know where he is right now, but I guess the big thing here also is the, the, uh, the stalker... <laughs> It currently looks like the stalker's attached to this thing. So Winnie's description, and he repeats it if you need it, was that Garrick walked in, scared Winifred, who was here because he lives here. Winnie reached out to his mind, and doing that caused Garrick to start shooting ice everywhere, Mm -hmm. which caused the jars to expand and explode. Okay. Because that's how that's how physics works. Right, right, right. Okay, so... So it wasn't like Garrick went over to their freezer and started rooting around. It was literally just the freezing temperature caused them... Mm -hmm. jams to expand blow up their jars that blew up the stalker the stalker escaped oh, so did he shove winnie in the aquarium or did winnie go in there himself no he ran away and went to hide and then he saw mr smooches was cold so he tried to warm him and then he got all bit up and tied up in his tentacles oh such a good boy i know we were all a little bit focused on the avant-garde headquarters when we saw it was frozen understandably because it was the headquarters and it was frozen if we go sort of poke our head out outside again, are there any other buildings that are notably frozen? Oh, that's a good idea. So you guys look outside and it looks like after a certain distance, the ice peters out. So he was like a volcano of ice as he was inside and then left and then outside got hit. And then for a while as he walked away, but then eventually it slows to a stop. Does that at least give us a direction to start heading or a direction that he left the, the building from? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, if you guys want to roll survival or no, you can, you guys can figure out cardinal directions. Mm -hmm. The geography of Ilium is deliberately ambiguous because it's a podcast. Mm -hmm. Let's say it's the direction that Hawthorne house is in. I say we follow the line and just walk in a straight line where it seems he was going and hope that he did not deviate off that straight line for any reason. 
Uh, are all you guys going to go with Veltari? Yes, I am. Uh, the Rocks say they're going to stay back with uh, Winnie and the Turtle to ma- in case Garrett comes back. They're going to guard your secretary. Is that cool? I'm going to say to Claudia, make sure you take care of Mr. Smooches and also the crabs, please. Also, don't mess with my stuff. I mean, you tell Winnie that who tells them that. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah, basically. Because I forgot silence. My bad. Continue to not do anything helpful. It's cool. We'll go save the day ourselves. Um, <laughs> as you guys walk out, the rocks throw things at Veltari's butt. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you guys start walking in the direction of Hawthorne House. There is a trail of ice for a while as he just seemed to like spew ice into the fields. Um, but eventually you get to unfrozen open ground. And that's when you start seeing skeleton patrols. Um, ever since Maximilian was in prison, the skeleton presence in the city has increased a lot mm-hmm. and they seem pr- pretty aggressive, actually. Like they're just running around with spears, just like to a, to an almost oppressive extent, especially when you get close to the house, which you guys are starting to do. So they, they are going to see you coming unless you take proactive measures. And if you do and then they spot you, it's going to get hairy. So now the ice is continuing all the way up to Hawthorne House. No, it just goes in that direction for a bit. And then there's open field for a while. So you don't you don't actually know that he kept going there. It's just the that's just the correct direction. Plus, I mean, like Alice invited him, right? He would have had to have an invitation. So maybe she knows something. Or he's a jerk face. (laughs) Is there a height limit to what I can fly? No, I think according to the rules, there's no reason why you can't fly up infinitely (laughs) they may need to patch that out because if we start getting space dragons yeah i'm like i want to grab uh garrick and fly straight into space and then drop him and then fly back down i basically want to do like an injustice super move uh no i'd like to fly if i could up to that second story uh window i don't know if they ever fixed the one that the rocks just broke after the the hawthorne house party yeah, they fixed it with bones. <laughs> it's full of bones now. Hey. I want to try to Christ. fly up to that. We can't, We have so many boner jokes. We can't use our entire allotment this soon. I would like to fly up to that window of boners and knock on it. <laughs> All right, so you knock on the boners. <laughs> Hold on. How am I picturing this? Are you picturing that there's still glass? And then the rest of it is just bones around it. Cause I was picturing it just like a bone patch. I was expect, I was thinking it like, uh, like, you know, when zombie apocalypse comes around, you start boarding up your windows with like two <laughs> by fours. It's that just bones instead of two by fours. <laughs> that's a, that's amazing. All right. So you knock on it and then you hear footsteps on the other side and then the bones like scoot out of your way. And then you see on the other side, Alice with her dragon bone staff. I want to immediately by the way say this is zoe i'm a dragon wild magic because i don't can't. think it's she silence. Knew that before oh shit oh snap uh but she did see you in tarsus when you were a dragon dope then okay so yeah so you're not immediately blasted out of the sky um but yeah she she does a spell on the other side to rearrange the bones because that's her specialty she sees you she heaves a sigh <laughs> And a silent sigh, I guess. <laughs> and just looks and just looks at you and is like, mm-hmm, no, this makes sense. I I was sitting, I was doing some macrame, and suddenly I couldn't hear myself talk anymore. Of course it's you, is what her face says. Mm-hmm. And she just looks at you like, uh-huh, and, yeah. I want to give the I'm sorry face, which mm-hmm. you've seen enough now that I don't think I need the words to carry across. <laughs> Intimately familiar, yes. Yeah. But has she seen it in Dragon? Uh... I like to think it's somewhat equatable, you know, like that's just a constant. You know what it looks like. Uh, And then I guess I want to try to communicate with her. I I guess I have to do like charades, essentially. Yeah. Performance (laughs) check to communicate through gestures. Okay. Twelve. It's not a good roll, though. Okay. So she understands you're looking for somebody and you like make a a mask face, a mask with your hands. Yeah. And she just shrugs like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And I'm like, oh, come on. And I do like like a thing that's like like a top hat. And then I like make him look like he's really stupid and angry. Like, meh, meh, meh. It's angry top hat, dude. How do you not get this? Ooh, actually, are there bones around, like laying around? Yeah, there's, I mean, it's the spooky bone sorcerer's house. So, yeah. I'm going to take a play out of uh, Crash Box's playlist with the Captain Bone Show. And I'm going to use bones to rearrange and create layer, uh, letters that say Garrick. 
<laughs> okay, so there's quite an elaborate series of events here. First, you're doing uh, pantomime, then you're spelling things with bones. Like, this is an entire physical comedy sequence, so I, I think I everybody else waits outside the gate. Like, like Roland has written on a piece of paper, shows it to Valtari. It's like, this would have been a lot easier if she had one of these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys have taken the hard way out, definitely. Okay, so she understands what you're saying. You're looking for somebody, someone named Garrick. He has a mask and a hat. She conveys to you through like shrugs and head shakes she has no idea what you're talking about she's she doesn't know who you're talking about or what you're talking about this is all gibberish to her ah because she never saw garrick at the party correct i mean that's the thing so she she probably doesn't even know who it is that we're even talking about uh i guess what she'll do then is she'll make a note of pointing out like uh like spelling out ice magic and then a question mark to see if maybe she knows anyone who had that kind of specialty of ice magic before. <laughs> All right. So you write ice magic question mark on her front lawn and bones. And then she, she points her staff down and underlines it using a ray of frost. All right. Well, this has been fun. I'm just going to fly away and like say goodbye. <laughs> I mean, were we all watching that? We could all see that, right? Yeah. I don't know if there's enough bones, but can Dora spell out pretentious wizard question mark? <laughs> I think you start doing it. You get like pretense and she just closes the bone window and goes back to bed. That's fucking rude. It's like two in the morning. We were doing a stakeout that like waited till midnight. And the midnight's actually when the fight literally happened. So, yeah. I mean, in character, you're all very tired, very exhausted. And some of you like explicitly got your self frozen or bit. Okay, can Dora spell out in bones um, Sylvia, question mark, and then point and like gesture to everyone to be like, maybe she can help? My, my concern is how do we wake her up at this hour when we can't knock on the door? There's one way to find out. Yeah. All right, Dora's going to start marching off. All right, so does everyone follow? Yes. I don't know where else to go, so off we go. All right, so there, I guess there are no objections. Uh, you guys go over to Sylvia's place. It is a modest, like, small home. Dora probably knocks. You don't get an immediate response, but you also don't hear the sound of her knocking, so. Um, is the door unlocked? Yep. All right, let's go in, yo. All right, so Theodora opens Sylvia's house and just, and just walks in the front door, and you guys are in Sylvia's house, and it has, like, a huge wide open space. There's, like, a whole foyer and the kitchen. There's just, like, a big house in here. Um, and the first thing you notice upon stepping inside is you hear you hear the sound of your own footfall. Oh, sweet. <gasps> it's the magic house. Uh, Dora's going to go, Sylvia, and see if it works. Yeah, you, get, you call out Sylvia, and Sylvia in her pajamas with like a goofy hat on comes out and is like, uh, hi, guys. Hey, Sylvia, uh, could you help us out? We're wondering if you might be able to help us track down uh, someone who was trying to kill us earlier. Are you? Why are you guys all covered in snow? Yeah, Lyra was killed by a snow wizard. There is snow. I'm tired. It's gone midnight. This is about as much as I can think <laughs> to explain to you right now. There's a snow wizard. <laughs> snow. I love the connection in and out of character right now. It's exquisite. Oh, exactly. For once, for once, we're recording a mission that is like beyond midnight in world. So I have an in-game excuse to be a bit sleepy. <laughs> she says, "Uh, yeah. I mean, that all seems a bit heavy, but I mean, I'm up now. Go get my cards. I'm gonna go get make a. I'm gonna go get some ice cream or something. I gotta wake up. You use ice cream to wake up? Sugar. Can I have some? Yeah. Can I get some if you're doing ice cream? Of course. <laughs> Thank you. You're the best. Thank you for letting us occasionally storm into your house and just have food. I mean, what else are friends for? Do I scratch my dragon belly? <laughs> I mean, she definitely gets some of that belly. What kind of uh, toppings does she have for this ice cream? And what kind of ice cream is like a base flavor, <laughs> is it? <laughs> I mean, she brought vanilla, chocolate, and, and strawberry. But if you want toppings, she'd get toppings, too. Oh, we're demanding, too. We're just like, what, no sprinkles? <laughs> <laughs> Dora was going to go help with the ice cream. Okay. Yeah, and also flirt. <sighs> hey, 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 you, this is my flirting house. <laughs> uh, excuse me? I claimed it first. You have you have your poly people to flirt with. I want to flirt with everyone. So do I. Okay, I go and I go and follow Dora in because I I'm not going to let this flirting <laughs> go go uncontested. 
All right, make a charisma contest between the two of you to see who flirts better. Oh, shit. Uh, charisma is a thing I am very good at. 20, a crit. Oh, damn. A crit. I am not charismatic in the slightest. <laughs> well, not in this attempt, at least. That's a six. So let's say that puns are not Sylvia's thing. Carrie loved them. <laughs> Car- <laughs> Carrie's a pun girl. Sylvia, not so much. Plus, I have a previous relationship with her. She likes belly scritches. Yeah, plus we had a sleepover with jammies and ice cream and pancakes. A- and you creeped her out by talking about your form of magic. Yeah, your evil eyeball god. I still have more groundwork laid. Yeah, I, I, I turn up very excitedly like, okay, it's the middle of the night. It's time for me to get my flirt game on. I'm not going to let Dora, you know, this, this is my time. Um, I, I start to hit it to, to, to make cool comments about, you know, body modification again. And just clearly I'm a bit sleepy and I sound, I sound more like an obsessed nerd than someone that's like, you know, in cool revelry as like a someone on the same level i just come off like i'm i'm a bit obsessed and therefore my (laughs) charismatic flirting attempt falls flat on its face i love the priorities on this group all right so let's get this ice cream party on the road (laughs) my priority was the ice cream party until dora wanted to flirt and then it's like right okay let's get my 1 30 in the morning flirting brain on i guess so we're going to do a tarot reading here. Do you guys want to talk amongst, amongst yourselves at this party at all? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, let's, let's, let's kind of review some things real quick before the reading here happens. That was a night. <laughs> Zoe, are you feeling any better right now? Yeah, I'm fine. Something the matter? I said I'm fine. That didn't sound very enthusiastic. Well, it's late, and I'm a dragon, and everything's quiet outside because of me, and it's been a day. It it has been a day. Look, I I I have a suggestion for the group. Like I I know that we couldn't we couldn't rest because uh we 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 couldn't rest before because the the headquarters was all icy. Mm-hmm. I need my beauty sleep. I'm gonna put this out there. I need my beauty sleep. I'm gonna be a big. Well, I I I was hoping that we were going to actually sleep as soon as we got back to base but yeah i'm 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 voting we after the reading we ask sylvia if we can crash here for a couple of hours just to just to get ourselves in a slightly better state for trying to fight an ice wizard without the ability to use verbal verbal spells which kind of uh screws me over ever so slightly so totally understandable um i'm just i'm so confused about what this thing is my my hope, and this is a weird thing to hope, because this is probably a really bad thing for us in the short term, but maybe a good thing in the long term. I am hoping for, like, dedicated disciple of God of, of Winter. I, I want someone who's so dedicated to the God of Winter that they have something blessed by the God of Winter in their possession, that kind of level of devotee to God of Winter, because mm-hmm. short-term, that's not good. Long-term, I wouldn't be opposed to so dedicated to God of Winter that you have something named after the God of Winter in your possession, but, you know... You know Worst-case scenario, we're dealing with some other type of entity altogether. I don't think I've ever seen uh, anyone with devices that could do what Garrick was pulling off back there. Well, it it seems like we need to be careful because this is quite a uh, special snowflake we're dealing with, it seems. Oh my god. (laughs) How dare you? (laughs) I know, I had that stupid terrible pun, I didn't want to use it, but it's been rattling around in my head for like (laughs) half an hour and I was like, I need to get those words out of my head so that I'm not thinking of them anymore. (laughs) Are you guys gonna call him a snowflake every time you see him from now on? <laughs> well, he, he he certainly decided to chill out of our base and get on his own way. That doesn't even make sense as a pun. <laughs> no one chills out of anything. It's not a verb. <laughs> Busted. So yeah, whatever whatever he is, he he seems pretty dedicated to to winter. Which is fine because the seasons change and we can we can, you know, winter's time will come. Am I making any sense or am I just half asleep? 
I think you turned into a Game of Thrones commercial at the end of it. But the rest of it was coherent. When we last were investigating Garrick as an entity, he didn't exist. He outright did not exist in anyone's mind, in Winnie's records. He might as well have not existed whatsoever. And then abruptly, he shows up again in this form. This potentially leads me to think that Garrick is still just someone in town that is operating under the guise of their uh, disguise in order to, I don't know, try to kill people, engage in some ice-related mischief. It's hard to tell. And also, unlike what happened with uh, us, it doesn't quite explain the Lyra situation because as far as Lyra was concerned, that death was done in any sort of unprovoked manner. Is uh, Sylvia at the table with us at this point? Yeah, she's ready to do a reading. I was just giving you guys a chance to talk. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to have Zoe ask her. So, uh, Sylvia, do you remember everybody who's come to you to try to get one of these uh, animal spirit things? Yeah, of course. Oh. Do you remember Garrick? Because he has one. It was a hydra. A hydra. Is that a, like a snake? Yeah, it's like a snake thingy with uh, several heads. Hmm. I don't remember any several heads. I did give out a snake. Uh, it was like a teenage girl. I'd never seen her before. It's why it sticks out in my mind. It was like a a snake with wings. I figured it was a lily because, you know, they can shape shift. So I, I don't know if she was like embarrassed or something. That's the only snake I've given out. That's not what you're looking for, though, right? It's not a hydra. Wait, who? it was someone you never met before? Did they give you a name? No, I mean, she came at like three in the morning, like what you guys did tonight, <laughs> and she didn't look familiar. And I'm pretty sure I know everyone's face by now. So it's clear she was trying to do it on the DL. That means down low, by the way. Roland's going to take out his notebook and kind of to himself start writing down a list of everyone that he knows that is a shapeshifter of some capacity. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of any names that jumps out in that process. Yeah, the shapeshifters you're aware of in town are Lady Nim, mm-hmm. Carrie King, mm-hmm. probably Penny. Mm-hmm. I'm now just I'm now just worried that my successful flirting with with uh, with Carrie. I'm just like, oh no, please tell me Carrie's not a nice wizard. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I guess Robin is kind of a shapeshifter. Clearly not the one you're looking for here, but I'm gonna ask Sylvia: Is there any other way besides through you that somebody'd be able to get one of these? That's a very good question, because I had, like, Lily is knocking down my door to try to get their own, which suggests to me that it's beyond even Lady Nim herself, which makes me feel pretty cool, because she's crazy scary good at stuff, but she apparently doesn't have illusory realities, hard to say. Um, <laughs> Zo- Zoe's hand's gonna shoot up? Yeah, Zoe, hi. Uh, did Lady Nim come to get a a stand from you an animal companion because this character doesn't actually know what stands are it'd be weird to refer to them that way <laughs> yeah she came by I, I call them totems but yeah she came by hers was really weird looking it was like a big leathery guy with like claws and wings and a tail and big scary teeth it's like if you ever seen like a kid's book and it's like oh the the smoogle dwarf under the bridge is gonna eat your family it was like that mm. it was pretty pretty messed up but like like i'm saying uh, really powerful people wanted me to do this for them because not and just anybody knows how to do the things I do. It's the kind of magic that, you know, for instance, just for example, might get you, you know, cut off from your family and kicked out of your plane of existence. And then you have to wander the multiverse looking for a place that will accept you. And then you end up in a hell prison. Just I mean, just off the top of my head, for example, mm, the kind of mm. thing that we're dealing with. Sylvia, I I hear you. I want to sympathize with you right now. I'm trying to deduce things right now, though. So if you could save your backstory for later. Yeah, that's cool. It's fine. It's just two in the morning and you're asking for my help and you're eating my ice cream. Sylvia, I have a question that may help and it may not. Um, Do you remember any of the other lilies getting spirity ghost animals that were definitely not a snake? Yeah, I mean, Carrie got an owl. I think it's because, like, owls are, like, really cute and soft, Mm. but they're also, like, scary, dangerous hunters. She has, like, both sides to her. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but the animals with the best compatibility are the ones that, like, match the personality of the person. Mm. Like, mine's a cockatrice, which is, like, they change flesh to stone, and I change reality to illusion. 
the Doris is both spooky and cute. And Roland is like really smart and strong. Just kind of a cool way of thinking about it. Ooh, that might be something to help you guys. Like what's what are Hydra's known for? Having a lot of heads. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, the other, your question was lilies with totems. Carrie had the owl. Yeah, I'm trying to pitch like li- lilies with totems that are not snake related and any lilies that you don't remember coming to you to get totems. Uh, Penny had a scorpion. It was like real little, like the size of like like a rice, like so small, but that's because she's tiny. Well, that I was going to say because scorpions venomous is inversely proportional to their size. Wait, is that for real? Yes. Oh. Mm-hmm. Cool. Zoo books, Austin edition. Um, <laughs> and then <laughs> Lady Nim had the big scary monster. Like it was like just like, hey, what if a nightmare could punch your head off? What did you want to roll insight to find out? <laughs> uh, knowledge, like either Arcana or otherwise. Oh, never mind. I rolled a two. You think it's the <laughs> the rare Western duckbilled platypus? I think Lady Nim has the rare Western duckbilled platypus. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll roll just my uh, my general knowledge here. Ten, so probably nothing too particular. No, you think it, it sounds like it's just something fiendish. Like it's whatever, something native to wherever she's from, which is probably hell. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Zoe's going to call out uh, and say, what does everybody know about Hydras? Nature check to, to, to know for sure. Seven on my part, unfortunately. Nineteen. Eight. Six. <laughs> Five, actually. I have a negative one. Y'all motherfuckers ain't heard nothing about Hydras except Veltari. <laughs> That's all you guys failed biology. Um, Veltari, what you know is from Legends is that Hydras are famous that when they get one of their heads cut off, a new one grows back. Uh, so there are a couple different ways to interpret that. It might be just something with that, a person with that literal ability. That might be a little too on the nose, though. It might be uh, just like the ability to survive death oh or something related it could be more metaphorical yeah my my instinct was to assume just like multiple heads multiple personalities multiple people that they could be hiding as was my my gut instinct on for for comparison claire got a cloaker which is something that is easily overlooked because it looks like a cloak but it's actually an animal and it's like oh claire the forgotten sister who represents the jealousy of Zoe, who was over always overlooked because of Cellarosa. So it's like, it could be just straight metaphor. It doesn't have to be like literally, oh, it, it's somebody whose head would grow back. Oh, don't tell me this is like the, 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 the god of ice reborn into human body or something. Can I roll an insight check? Because I have ideas on who this could apply to, but I don't know if Zoe would be able to pick up on it. I don't know that you could... Do a check necessarily. You want to run it by me, and then we'll see. So, I'm I'm thinking uh, sort of on different areas here. Do we know if Wolf ever did he reveal a stand to us, a totem? Uh, no. Didn't he have a magical amulet? Because he is somebody who already we know has a connection to Garrick. And when I think of the idea of something like a Hydra, which could go re- uh, regrow heads, regeneration is a very like common thing for trolls to have yeah that is literally the entire gimmick of trolls in D is that their injuries grow back so i'm trying to in a way think to myself like, if zoe could be able to make a connection there although if this is wildly off base then i mean zoe's smart enough she's not a super genius but i think she can make that without a role if you just want to say it out loud i do do not want to gloss over something that lauren kind of yelled interjectedly there which is not i don't think a word but she said didn't wolf have an amulet and he did you guys never asked him about it or looked into it but he's he's had an amulet in every scene yeah it's it's odd i was in his head and he had a full instagram shrine in his mind he saw garrick and he thinks he's just the coolest he loves Garrick. He likes all his cool little toys. He likes his hat and his mask. He thinks he's great. Mm. So I'll just gonna say Zoe's going to say, "Hey, uh, did anyone see if Wolf had a totem? Did did Wolf come to you for a totem, Sylvia? Oh, the green guy, the troll. He has a scarf. Yeah, he came by. He was. I mean, I don't want to be mean. He got mud everywhere, and he was kind of a yeah." Kind of a whole production. Yeah, uh, his was like a big, um, long... What's the word I'm looking for? Wiggly. Was it a worm? 
Yeah, that. I was going to say that sounds very, very wolf, but is it a myth or not that worms can regrow if cut apart? Uh, I think in our world, it's a little bit exaggerated. Like, there's parts of worms that you can cut off that won't kill them, but it's kind of overstated. But in the D&D world, you can cut a worm clear in half, and then you have two worms. Uh, I have an idea of a possible creature it could be if it was a worm. It's one of the most uh, frightening things, granted. One of the most iconic D&D creatures? Uh, yeah, that's what it was. Because it's like, when I think worm, I think like something you can hold in your hand. But this one, like... It filled up my entire house. Oh, jeez. He has a purple worm on him. Exactly. Oh, jeez. It was a ghost, so I couldn't tell the color. But <laughs> when you do enough campaigns, you hear stories about <laughs> creatures. And that one gets a mixture of laughter up until you describe what it can do. And then the shock settles in. I want I want Zoe to like grab... Uh, Roland's notebook and like flip to a new page and she's just gonna start writing down everyone they know and then next to it the totem of the animal if they uh like if they know what someone has mm-hmm. I have this word document if you guys actually want to know all of them mm-hmm. um uh, should I read this on air yeah go ahead all right so Theodora has the periton Roland has a griffin his name is Perry Mason this <laughs> Zoe has the rust monster I right, voice them Exactly. (laughs) Veltari has a manticore. Claudia has a flail snail. (laughs) Lady Nim has some unidentified fiendish thing. That's not what it says on my paper. I almost said it. Um, Penny has a scorpion. Carrie has an owl. Claire has a cloaker. Wolf has a purple worm. Sylvia has a cockatrice. Uh, Garrick has a hydra. And... A character who you don't know their identity, who was described as a teenage girl, came in and got a winged snake. It it should tell you how tired I am tonight when we're recording that as soon as you said Garrick has the Hydra, I wanted to shout out like, Aha, it's Garrick! <laughs> <laughs> we got him! Austin accidentally told us who had the Hydra, ha <laughs> ha! God, how good would that be if you guys tricked me into reading my notes in such a way that it gave away his identity? I'm just glad no one seems to have a Tarrasque, because <laughs> that shit would be terrifying. Yeah. Now, if you if you shared your soul with a Tarrasque, that would be basically game over. All right, I guess deal the cards out now. Yeah. I mean, you know what? If we just left the recording on for like two hours and you guys just talked, I think you'd get there eventually. <laughs> I felt like I had the right track with with Wolf, but I, I'm missing something. Yeah, well. Um, so I got a question, uh, Sylvia, just before you start. The teenage girl that you gave the winged snake to, do you remember what she looked like at all? Yeah, I mean, she was like teenage. Uh, she had pointed ears. She paid me in like a bunch of cool stuff. She had like uh, custom like handmade jewelry. Do you want to see it? Yes. <laughs> uh, she, she puts the cards down and goes into the other room, comes back with like cool, custom, like fancy, intricate watches and like a necklace and like rings and stuff. Like it just seems like a bunch of like really fancy, nice jewelry. Can I take a closer look at those for a moment, uh, Sylvia, if it's not too much to ask? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I owe all my wealth to you guys. Basically, you're free advertising for my operations. Roland's going to just note over them to see if there's any indi- uh, any particularly interesting markings or symbols on any of them. Uh, investigation? You got it. I know you love your investigation checks. Uh, 22 on there. Holy cow. Uh, so you look over all this jewelry that this unidentified girl paid Sylvia with, and uh, what you understand from looking at it is that it's handmade it doesn't say like rolex <laughs> on the watch or anything right 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 it, there's no brand there's no uh necessarily no particular house that it's tied to like a like if we're talking eberron like a house of Caneth or something like that that it's tied to yeah it doesn't have any distinguishing marks but not because i didn't include them <laughs> it's like it's a like a plot point that there's no marks on this at all mm-hmm. there's it's like there's this weird dichotomy right on one hand it's super super high level craftsmanship like um, a master made this on the other hand it doesn't have Mm -hmm. any marks that a master would put on it so that people know they did it Mm. it's weird it's like explicitly plot point weird and no religious symbols either then in that case correct who just sort of nod and 
offer them back to Sylvia. It's like, thank you. All right. So, uh, Sylvia, do you want to try the reading then? Yeah, I thought you guys would never ask. You've gone through two gallons of ice cream. <laughs> it's been pretty good. And also, it's been a rough day. <laughs> it's been so rough. <laughs> uh Okay, so let's see here. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Deal, deal, deal. I'm looking into the future of your organization, basically. So in the same way I looked into my future and I saw that I was going to meet you guys, uh, it looks like the avant-garde's basic future is tied to three arcana. I have uh, Judgment, which is, I guess, the big angel guy. Hermit, which is your spooky skeleton friend. And... Oh, yikes. The world, mm. which is I probably the guy you're looking for, I guess. The world represents the completion of the story of tarot. It's like the end of everything when you have like the full perspective of a life's journey. So the world is usually somebody who can see something you can't. Are you sure we're not looking for Dio? I was going to say, like, uh, like we're going to Garrick. It's like you thought you were... Go after Garrick, but in reality, it was me, Dio. And then <laughs> I deserve that. It was just going to go downhill from there. But um, Roland furrows his brows a bit at that. And this almost seems to imply that there's going to be kind of an impasse between these two. He sort of reaches over and touches on uh, Judgment and the Hermit. Yeah, it's, it's hard to know exactly what's going to happen, but it seems like they have what you're looking for to get to this last part. Because last time I looked at your guys' this future, I got Wolf and Penny, and the world wasn't there. It seems like whatever's going to happen with him is going to happen after these two. So I think you're close. You guys, are, you guys are making progress. You're on your way. I hope that's reassuring. This ice cream is reassuring. <laughs> How about for simplicity's sake, we can finish up the scene, and then you guys can sleep this off. Because remember... Zoe's un- uh, unlocking wave didn't c- keep lo- unlocking all the doors in town forever. Yeah. There seems to be several different styles of the wild magic, like ones that physically change her and ones that do things until the next spell, one that do things until a certain amount of time. Yeah, that was my thinking, is we ask Sylvia very nicely if we can if we can crash at hers, because our place is a bit icy. So, pajama party part two? Pajama party part two. <laughs> So do we all have to roll for pajamas then? Please? Yes, everybody roll pajamas. What is a roll for pajama? D20 plus your comfort modifier. <laughs> okay, I got eight. Four. Eight. Mm, this isn't a great pajama party. <laughs> and seven. <laughs> you had too much ice cream. Yeah, everyone feels all like bloated and logy. <laughs> I, I didn't even eat the ice cream, so I'm just like... You're too much of a grump to have a good pajama roll. <laughs> yeah, that's it's this like it's just rolling like st- arms crossed, stone faced. It's like a pillow hits his face again. He's like, "I said no pillow fights." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I mean, you guys had a rough day, both in and out of universe. <laughs> I think. Yeah. So you have fitful, uneasy pajama party, probably. So I guess let's skip ahead. I we can we I think we can kind of skip over like stuff in the morning unless there's anything significant we're doing outside of like checking to see if the silence is still active and then possibly just checking in at base to see if the snow has melted you know so you guys wake up you get breakfast i don't know if you guys are going into breakfast shenanigans maybe take takeout from, from sylvia's you go home uh the rocks have cleaned up all the ice and snuff on your eyes's house and they're still kind of babysitting winifred i bring them pancakes is the silence effect gone? Uh, yes. Oh, nice. Just like the storm eventually detached from Zoe and the polka eventually ran out, there's a couple different kinds of effects. This one was just timed. Okay. In that case, should we go back to Alice Hawthorne and see if we can make any more progress now? We know a bit more than we knew before, and we can actually talk, and we're not trying to send slow, bit-by-bit bit cryptic messages. Some of us can do that, and the others can check the house we staked out last night and just see if there's any evidence there because we never had a chance to do that. Do we want to Scooby do it? Uh, Roland is going to go to the other house whether or not anyone else goes with him. I I want to go to Alice Hawthorne's. I'm going to go to the other house with uh, Roland then. And I think Zoe's actually uh, not going to 
decide to go with either team. She's actually, I think, going to take to the air and try to see if she can spot anything from above. <laughs> okay, bucking the bucking the expectations for your character. Why don't you roll me a perception? 21. I see Wolf putting away his fancy top hat. <laughs> <laughs> Well, why don't you why don't you be more specific? What part of town are you flying over? I think she's going to start by flying towards the area which uh, Garrick went, so like towards Hawthorn House. But clearly, he didn't go, or at least it doesn't seem he went into the house. Um, like we didn't see the skeletons frozen or anything like that, and they're aggressive. So I don't think he went into the house. So she she wants to fly in an area to see if I guess there's any sign of where he may have went from there. And then after that, I think it's like kind of like a fly over towards the house they staked out and then just investigating anything that might be in between there along the way. Okay, so you fly over Hawthorne House and the Wizard's House, which is what we're going to call the the kind of broken up building. And you don't see anything that particularly catches your eye. It's mostly just skeletons like no one lives out here except for Alice inside her house. Um, But you do notice with a 21, what you get is it seems to be multiple kinds of skeletons in Alice's employ. So you guys have met like the ones that were servers at the parties, the ones who were uh, kind of guests at the party, the ones who guarded the gates. Um, What I'm I'm specifically giving you for rolling so well is that maybe you haven't considered that not all of these skeletons are created equal. From above, perhaps it's clear that there's actually some kind of hierarchy or nuance to the skeleton situation. Hmm. That that's what you notice up there. Roland and Theodora, why don't you roll me to toss the wizard's house investigations? Uh, 16 in my case. Uh, Roland and Dora, you guys uh, start walking in. This is, uh, like we said before, kind of a modest house on the outskirts of Ilium. Uh, the roof is caved in. The windows are broken. It looks like this has been abandoned for a long time. And like people come here, kind of just mess around. Like Maybe people come here to make out or <laughs> steal stuff and graffiti stuff. It's your local crime house. Anything that we notice in particular as we kind of actually go into the house itself? The thing you notice is that um, there's a lot of books in here that no one bothered to steal because they didn't seem Mm -hmm. interesting, relevant, valuable. There are a lot of like wizardly texts about artificing. Uh, So like making magical items or using magic and technology together, the intersection of magic and technology, in other words. And so you can pop these open and you're like, hmm, I've got to connect the fuse to the arcane crystal and stuff. And it's like people came in here and they trashed the place, but they looked through those and they were bored. Their eyes glazed over. They left them. That's what's left here. Roland's just, that's just just a, a knowledge check to try to basically comprehend some of the contents of the books. And more specifically, look for anything that might be keyed around time manipulation or ice so in the books you find stuff that you think could be intermediary in the creation of time magic it seems like the wizard that lived here used these books as the first step and then went above and beyond Mm -hmm. and create so i think it's pretty obvious at this point they created these devices And so you could you couldn't recreate them just from the books. You need that level of genius above it. Right. Um, but but notably, not anything about ice magic. Well, Roland's gonna telepathically call for Trinity to head over. Mm-hmm. And by the time Trinity arrives, he's gonna basically have the books kind of sectioned and then stores them on Trinity to have them transported back to headquarters for the time being. Uh so you take the books from the house and then let's go back over to uh Veltari who went to the Hawthorne place. Uh, What do you do about all the skeleton guards? Uh, I'm going to walk up politely and just be like, hello. (laughs) Uh, One of the skeletons holds out a skeletal hand asking for an invitation. That's that's like all their program to do, basically, is like ask for idea. ID. I don't know why I said idea. Yeah, I do not have ID, and I'm just going to kind of barge past. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh no <laughs> all right they are definitely good so they try to like tackle you to the ground uh strength check i guess to wrestle skeletons because uh, they're not gonna let you through okay strength check i do <laughs> like all of a sudden it just starts popping off in a major way yeah yeah i don't really know what my plan was if you scream loud enough I might hear. Okay, so here's what happens. I rolled a seven, you rolled a 13. So you start throwing skeletons off of you. Um, you're, you're getting the upper hand, but because 
Zoe rolled a 21 on perception. You do see this fracas, Zoe. You, oh, okay. You see Phil Tari, who went to just talk to someone who is now in the middle of a skeleton fist fight. Okay. Uh, I want to uh, eagle dive swoop <laughs> down towards her. Uh-huh. Uh, and when I... Well, I'm not big enough to actually pick her up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it got so bad so fast. <laughs> I was like, oh, so you read these books and it's this knowledge. All of a sudden it's like, and then you get stabbed to death. You know what? Fuck it. I've done it before. Let's do it again. I want to get close enough. And then I'm just going to cast Wall of Wind. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and and just block them off, essentially. Chris, why? Because I can't lift her up. So we saw it. She's so small. She's too small. I would say that she would just lift her up like a dragon and fly her up to Alice. But. She doesn't have that ability. All right. So here we go. I, like I said before, there's like a million skeletons here. They're all converging on this fight. I'm not going to roll for each one individually. You drop a wind wall and they start get blown around. Roll for wild magic. 18. Oh, so the first thing before I check what this is in the wild magic table, I just want to say is this wind wall doesn't even solve the situation, which is now there is several skeletons worth of tornado happening. But let's check 18. <laughs> Chris, you son of a bitch! <laughs> what? <laughs> Hold on, I had to get another book out for this one. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh no, what did you do? My guess is this: uh, Zoe uh, turns into a ma- random magic item. Nope. Uh, roll me, Chris, a D one hundred. Oh, jeez. Oh man, the fan artists are gonna hate me. Oh, good. This uh, twenty-seven. New creature. Yeah. Huh. Uh, so what What you rolled on was the reincarnation table. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. 27 is high elf. <laughs> oh. Okay. Dar- you're a half elf, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you're just swooping down. You drop a wind wall, and all of a sudden, you're almost back in your original body. Oh, heck. Wait, how old, though? This is a reincarnation. Mm-hmm. So so her whole body, like, re- she turns into, like, a light dragon. The whole light reforms into a brand new body that is her, that represents her soul, which is a, a teen, a, a late teens elf drops into the middle of this skeleton tornado with Veltari. You're not a half elf, so you're not exactly back, but you're almost back in your original body. You've gone around the horn against all <laughs> mathematical... <laughs> sense and logic somehow i'm looking at this table just trying to run the math on the it's very improbable that you would have rolled that it, dragon board would have been a funny thing to land on that would have been pretty funny there i missed the tiny dragon though and the very tiny dragon was very good i mean it was a five percent chance of the reincarnation and then like i don't know a five percent chance of the elf so there was a four percent chance of becoming a tiefling that would have been funny double tiefling oh heck hey uh <laughs> gonna have an easy time getting into the bar now i guess I'm going to slap Veltari on the shoulder and then cast haste. And I'm just going to tell her, run. And oh, shit, she can't get through the fucking do- magic doorway thing. The stairs. The Bowser stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, isn't that another ma- wild magic roll? Okay, so let's also just say that you land sprawled in the yard, surrounded by skeletons, and there's wind all around you. And Veltari pulls out uh, her spare clothes, and we solve that situation. Oh, yeah. I had a hat <laughs> and gloves. Oh, no. Chris. <laughs> what if I cast haste? Okay. So you're going to give Veltari super speed and you guys are going to run where? I, I, she's going to say it to her is in the notion of like, just go into the house now because you're going to be faster than the skeletons. Okay. So why just start running into the house? I don't know where I'm going. I guess I'm looking for staircases or places that look important. This is such a profound cluster fluffer. Um, <laughs> we're all in the wild magic again. 13? Lucky 13? You idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what happened now? I hope it's undo the last wild magic roll you did. This is so dumb. I shouldn't have put this. This is the worst. <laughs> this is your fault, Austin, whatever it is. I made such a tremendous mistake. <laughs> what is it? Did she get another level or something? Zoe, you don't know this right away, but uh, you're going to have to role play this for the foreseeable future. Uh, you can only speak in rhyme. <laughs> oh, fuck 
<laughs> me. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me look up some Gruntilda from Banjo Kazooie quotes. And I can go off those for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's what's gonna happen outside. Remember, there's still the skeletons in the wind wall. There's a lot going on, but inside. Uh, Veltari, you have super flash speed. You just zoom into the house, leaving the skeletons behind you. What do you do next? I, as, as I said before, I'm sprinting around looking for staircases or places that look important. Yep, you can zoom around the house. I would make you roll, but you can move so fast that you should just check everything. Um, you find that there is a staircase here that leads to the second floor, but no matter how much you climb it, you do not make any progress. That is the important thing. Okay, so I cannot get up that staircase. I would like to instead then try. Can I try and cast Detect Thoughts? I mean, yeah, you can. Um, Because other than targeting it on a specific creature, I can use it to detect thinking creatures I can't see. Yeah, I mean, you cast Detect Thoughts. There's, a, there's one thinking person upstairs. And I can't... To, like read the thoughts of that person now that I've detected them, can I? Yeah, it's Alice Hawthorne, and she's thinking, she. so it's just surface thoughts, so she's probably thinking like, hmm, I think I'll have a BLT. Okay, so she's not picked <laughs> up on all of the volume going on below, out the front of the house. No, she's in her room. Okay, Um, in that case, I'm going to use my Thaumaturgy cantrip to triple the volume of my voice. And shout, hey, if this is your house, I'm down here and I could really use your attention for a second. I know you're up there. I can hear your thoughts. I love how complicated you guys feel the need to make everything. Because the last time someone was in this house, they just like walked in the front door and was like, hey, Alice. And she just came down. <laughs> well, I wasn't there that last time, was I? I know. I'm just saying as out of, out of game, out of character, how... You guys are adorable and awesome. <laughs> um, so she comes running down the stairs, flanked by the caretaker, her skeleton golem bodyguard. And she's like, why are you yelling? Well, I'm yelling because you have a magic staircase that I can't get up. So hi, how are you? Yeah, it's called a security <laughs> measure, as are the skeletons outside, which have orders to kill on sight. So, Well, they apparently didn't do so. Hi, I'm Veltari. I don't think we've met. <laughs> <laughs> You're a smug little shit, ain't you? Oh, I know. That's how I get through my day. Um, I should probably throw, like, let you know this. I'm with the 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 avant garde. Did you destroy all my skeletons? Uh, you'd have to ask Dora <laughs> about that. That that's on Dora. I just ran in here very quickly. What? Um, <laughs> I wasn't even there. Yeah, I would say. I was gonna say it would it would make sense for her to blame Dora anyway after being one up in terms of the. The flirting, yeah. Actually, I like that. Let's blame Dora. Yeah, blame Dora on that one. I, I don't know. Blame Dora. Um, so hey, sorry to bother you. Um, I'm, I'm hoping my vol, my volume is not still at three times volume at this point. No, it's a cantrip. You can turn it off. Okay, I turn off my my volume. Uh, hey, so sorry to barge in. There's an evil ice wizard that we think is murdering people in town and is just like absolutely destroying people, blew a, a giant into into icy chunks, and uh, we have been led to believe that you can help us stop this ice wizard from killing anyone else. So, you cool to sit down and chat for a minute? I mean, I'm not sure I can help. You guys came to my place last night and asked me about this Garrick, who apparently is an ice wizard, and I told, well, <laughs> I signed to Zoe, that sweet, wonderful child that I had no idea what you guys were talking about. She seems real nice, though. I like that one. And then let's cut over to Zoe, who's being stabbed to death on the front lawn. Hey, no. Well, actually, because here's the thing. I, I think Zoe doesn't want to do this again. So instead of like, just letting the wind wall hang up, I would assume that she would. I don't know if I need to, like, if I can say I prematurely end it. So the way concentration works is that you can just choose to stop concentrating on it. <laughs> yeah, no, Zo Zoe's a good kid and definitely not outside causing trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you choose to stop concentrating on the wind wall. It stops, and now you're surrounded by hostile skeletons with spears who have orders to kill on sight. Trespassers, which you are trespassing. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm going to cast Misty oh Step Oh my backwards. god. <laughs> 
<laughs> Chris, are you deliberately trolling me, or is this all? I, I'm. It's she. She panicked, and I panicked, and we're here now. <laughs> Listen, this show is profoundly stupid, but it is a lot of fun. Let's see how you ruin it next. Roll again. Let's, see, let's come on. Let's get a one. Thirteen again, which you just did. So nine. All right, I'm bracing myself. Hold on. <laughs> I have to open this doc. Oh. Hold on, I should come up with a great rhyme to get out of here. With, yes, like... oh, please. Oh, this one's pretty good. You know, I gotta retreat before I get beat, you know? You can go, like... This has been fun, but I gotta run. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, your head looks like a boof, and now I'm gonna disappear in a poof. <laughs> and I don't know what the first part meant, but magic's making me say this. I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> or hey, I gotta get away. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty good. You're surrounded by skeletons. They all rush in to stab you from every direction. They're gonna pincushion you to death, and you just poof magically away. And now you're on the other side of the gate where you're no longer trespassing. And you land, and you look back, and then you hear something hit the ground, and then more and more and more. And you look down, and from your person, you are just is leaking the right word emanating gold coins are just falling off of your person I'm just erupting money yeah absolutely just from your hands basically you're just like like as if you were holding a handful of gold coins but infinitely and wherever you walk you just leave a trail of them behind you oh my god is she the new mint no are we are we going to have like a stable currency in this economy now <laughs> i mean zoe would control it 100 percent, which is problematic <laughs> Not problematic for the avant garde. That's true. First of all, Zoe, do you do you retreat or do you just stand in the yard and accumulate a pile of gold? Uh, it's the exact scene is almost going to just be. She's about to get pinned cushion. She teleports backwards. Money starts erupting out of her, and she just runs away, leaving behind a trail of money <laughs> just everywhere she runs. Exactly. It looks like it's time to cash and dash for her. Uh. <laughs> oh yeah, you still have to talk in your eye. That has not gone away. Yeah, she's like, yeah, she's like, for now I must dash, but here you take all this extra cash. I really must go, but enjoy all this dough. <laughs> I'm so, it's like the worst person to have gotten this rhyming thing. I can't do it. It's, I didn't mean it like this, but it's 100% <laughs> definitely, in retrospect, my revenge on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, I want to have her cast Chromatic Orb four times into the air. You die. You just die. You're dead. <laughs> okay, back in the mansion. Veltari, you're talking to Alice. Zo Zoe's, Zoe's outside and definitely not causing you any trouble. Um... Oh, that's great. I, I like her. She's a sweet child. <laughs> so, I, I know we were here last night. Here's, here's the deal. We've learned a bunch since last night, and also we're now not having to communicate through words spelled out in bone. <laughs> yeah, you guys really made that super complicated. Yeah, mm, yeah, we have a habit of doing that. Like, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be honest. Um, I was hoping we could just turn up today. Zoe could come in and say, "Hey, do you mind if we come in and have a conversation?" But Zoe just kind of ran off. And I, I'm gonna be honest. They, this became a whole lot more of a palaver than I hoped our first meeting would be. But um, do you mind if we sit down and just like have a chat over a cup of tea or something and see if there is anything we can we can do if like i i get it i'm intruding on your house but i'd like this to be as unintrusive and as pleasant as we could make it if if you know i, I don't want to be a horrible obtrusive shouting in your face house guest yeah sure do you like blts blt sounds fantastic if i'm honest it's been it's been a hell of a day all right. I told your friend that I would kill you if you guys trespassed and you keep trespassing, which leads me to believe that either this is really important or you don't value your safety enough for threats to work. So I'm just kind of in a rough place in general. Hmm. I'll, I'll let you know. First of all, I, this message was not passed on to me. Your friends seem bad at messages. I don't one of you. Can't one of you talk telepathically? I feel like you could have just said, like, hey, we're outside. I feel like that's a thing they could have told me before I turned up here. I'm sorry, I didn't know that this was a don't turn up here on the threat of death situation. Mm, okay, so so she makes tea and sandwiches and you guys sit down uh, and she says, uh, so I already told you, I don't know your ice wizard, but if I can help you in any other way, I guess I'll answer your questions. So go ahead. I kind of want to just recount to her everything possible we learned at Sylvia's the night before. I want to recount sort of... <laughs> 
I believe like everything we know about like the history of potentially what's going on with this ice wizard, the what we got from the reading of the cards, what we know about the it just like everything I know, I just want to kind of throw out there. Yeah, that's a really smart move actually because I feel like we could sit here and play 20 questions, but this is much simpler <laughs> because now she knows everything and she can tell you what she knows. So uh, I just want to like lay all of my cards out on the table. I'm not going to hold anything back in terms of what we've learned since we last spoke and just be like, so I'm really sorry if I've turned up and nothing we've learned ha- does, you know, change anything. But speaking to Sylvia and going through the tarot reading, she seemed convinced that you still had something that you could tell us. So we thought it was worth coming back. Okay, so a lot of that meant nothing to me. Um, But what did... And what I guess I could help elucidate is uh, you guys went over to Azrael's house on the edge of town. Azrael. I don't think that name's come up for us yet. What I've gleaned from your story is that you guys got kick, got your asses kicked in his front yard. Or I guess, I mean, it was his front yard. Well, Been in jail for a long time. I'll, I'll be fair. We were doing some pretty good ass kicking until the whole we couldn't talk thing, which kind of screwed up doing magic. But until then, we were doing all right. Yeah, I mean, he was an incredibly powerful wizard. Um, I don't know many of the people who live here now, but when we first arrived, we met some of the locals, and he was a, a terrifyingly powerful wizard. One of the only people I really spoke with at length. Just, I, I like I said, I haven't le- I, until you guys came into my life. I hadn't left this house in decades, so I actually don't know all of the details of what da- what went down with him. But this Garrick went through his stuff and took all of his old. All of his old gizmos and gadgets, is what I'm hearing? Yeah, that's the impression we get, is that he... Whoever this Garrick is, knows not only enough to be able to, 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 you know, go through someone else's stuff, but seems to have, like, very much made it their own, and and be very familiar with this stuff, like... Well, they've, they've had a long time. Yeah, it, se- it seems like you've been around, around, around Ilium a while. Is there anyone at all that jumps out to you as like might be more powerful of a wizard than than we give them credit for because it seems like we're dealing with someone very powerful who's very good at hiding that they're good at magic well here's the thing from your story it actually doesn't sound like he's good at magic at all in fact i (laughs) i don't think this guy's a wizard you reckon how are we explaining through the ice then it seems like that's not in his control. It seems like it's something that happens on his behalf. Like you said, there was a veil of silence, so he couldn't even cast any spells, and yet it was the ice was attacking you. Hmm. And then he got spooked, and the ice attacked your house? Yeah. And he uses devices instead of spells. I, I think you guys actually have it all wrong. The, you're looking for someone who has no power and is using other things to compensate for that. Oh no, I'm now worrying. Someone someone in our team had the idea that maybe this person was and this is going to sound really silly when I suggest it because I this might be really off off base. Someone like Wolf. Uh, I don't know him. <laughs> I don't know B- her. A, a big big a big guy that farms a bunch of uh potatoes out on the side outside of town and uh doesn't really contribute much of anything and would be very easy to overlook. Oh no. Oh no. I'm worrying now in case this is what's going on. Weird. But you said I'm let, let me let me walk back through this. Yeah. You said that Garrick had was sharing his spirit with the Hydra. Yeah. But not this green guy. No, the green guy is sharing it with a purple purple worm. So I mean that's that seems to discount it, doesn't it? Yeah, possibly. I I'm wor- I'm trying to work out like there's there's a few people in town that have serpentish creatures and I'm trying to work out if there's some kind of link there maybe, but in, unless we're just looking for someone with no magical ability and no totem creature that we've learned about yet. Yeah, this sounds like a really intricate 
nuanced mystery, like a really clever puzzle. It does <laughs> indeed sound like a very clever puzzle that some kind of grand overseer has almost crafted for us. Yeah, does it? Uh, the only other thing is that you brought up something about Ger- Garrick having an invitation to my party, and that's why you thought I knew him. Yeah. So that I think that might have been a misunderstanding. I didn't choose who to invite. I just made a couple of invitations, and then I gave them to... Well, I, I call him the librarian, like the the head skeleton for paperwork matters, kind of a kind of a secretary, and he kind of just went around town finding the most interesting people to hand them out to. I I I've not really spent much time with your skeletons. I I don't know how much they are ones for communicating. Oh, it depends. There's the kind of worker bees with the spears. There's of course my bodyguard. Who could tear your head off with his bare hands? He's pretty cool. <laughs> and then the librarian. He he mostly just does like, you know, helps me with research and Would the librarian be able to tell us who they invited to the party? Yeah. You could you could just ask him. Okay, yeah, that that seems like it's probably the most useful thing we can do while we're here, I guess. Uh, I'll call him down, I guess. Is that is that what you want? Yeah, yeah, that'd be that'd be fantastic. Thank you. Okay. I'll go get him. And uh, she leaves you alone with the caretaker who sits on the other side of the <laughs> the breakfast nook and just like stares at you, this giant Frankenstein skeleton man who's kind of spooky. Um, and then she comes down with another skeleton who looks like all the other skeletons, except he's not carrying a spear. And he has like uh, an inkwell and a feather pen-, pen with him. And he's just like... Does he have little glasses on? Yeah, now he does, definitely. And a mustache. A fake mustache. <laughs> I do like the idea of a skeleton with a mustache. Um, so yeah, the librarian just kind of looks at you. These skeletons don't have tongues, so they can't actually talk, but we'll see what happens. Hello, it's uh, it's very nice to meet you. Um, I'm hoping you can help me here. We're looking for someone that had an invitation to the uh, the party that was thrown here a little while ago, and if you could... Either by name or description, give us a list of who was the, who who you invited to the party or who you gave invites to. That'd be very helpful. He takes out a piece of paper with his little pen, his inkwell. He writes down the names of all the people he gave invitations to. So it's Carrie. You guys got some. You got one from Ishmael, Blood Mountain. You got one from The Rocks. Got one. Lady Nim. Uh, none of this is news to you, but there is a name on this list. That is surprising. And it is Wolf. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, Wolf, okay. Okay, this is useful. Um, Okay, look, I'm... I'm gonna get out of your hair. I I have a... I still don't know how to put this together quite, but I think there's someone we probably need to go back and speak to at some point. Um... I apologize for coming today. I didn't know the situation with don't come here on the pain of death. Um, I get the impression that you have a bit of a strange relationship with the rest of the avant-garde and that a lot of that is them barging into your house uninvited and causing problems for you, which I appreciate is very much what I did this morning unknowingly. I just kind of uh, followed the lead and didn't really know the baggage I was walking in with. Um... Was that on the job application? Must be able to burst into old lady's house uninvited? Look, I'm going to be honest. I joined the team because they got me a cool ghost manticore and I'm trapped here forever, I guess. So, you know, I, I went where the cool stuff was, but... Nah, cool ghosts. I feel ya. Yeah, cool cool ghosts are a, are a you know, good choice of, of where to spend your time. But is there any way that in future, if I do need to speak to you, I can do so in a way that's less... um turn up at your door disrupting everything causing you a big nonsense because <sighs> i'm going to be honest i get the impression that there's going to be pressure from the rest of the, from the rest of the team to come talk to you again at some point i'm not going to be naive and promise that i'm never going to come back here because the impression i get from you is that that's just not realistic but is there any chance we can be on slightly less having to or or at least i can be on slightly less bash down all your skeletons, break down the door, scream up a flight of stairs at you status. I mean, you can just do what Zoe did last time, which was just give a note to the guards to bring to me, and then I come let you in. That seems like a good solution. I wish Zoe had run that past me. (laughs) 
<laughs> you know, had, had, I had, literally had somebody either you told me to bring a note or had, you know, at the time could fly, I think. So had had Zoe, you know, flown up and just been like, hey, sorry, we accidentally stormed the... You know, there are things we could have done in hindsight. I'll... <laughs> Yeah, this episode was a lot of that. <laughs> I'm not going to promise you I won't ever come back, but I will try to do so on polite terms. And I hope that it will not be an unpleasant experience as best I can make it. I, I, I'm sorry that I'm not promising more than that, but I'm I'm trying to be realistic. Okay, well, uh, I hope you find what you're looking for, and have, have a nice day. Tell Zoe that... Uh... She stop by any time. I actually uh, enjoy her company. Thank you. Uh, in, in No, it's fine. In future, I'll probably, you know, send her along. Seems like she would have been a better fit for this, but... Uh... I do like the idea that if Chris hadn't extricated Zoe from that situation, you guys have this, like, sit down where you talk about plot stuff, you guys say goodbye, you open the door, and she's just stabbed <laughs> to death on the lawn. Like, how how grisly would that have been? Uh, so yeah, just... That- <laughs> I just want to thank you for your hospitality and I'll be out of your hair now. Th- thank you very much. You've been far more of a gracious host than, uh, than I probably uh, deserved, considering the way I turned up at your house. Okay, so I guess you leave and you f- see a trail of gold oh, <laughs> going away from the house. Just gold coins in a <gasps> Zoe. breadcrumb line. Zoe, 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 Zoe. Zoe. Do you guys want to reconvene and share all of your knowledge before we start the next leg of this investigation? Sounds good to me. Roland, Roland has like the books stacked up in the kitchen on the kitchen table. Hey there, Roland, my friend of old. I'm now an elf now, and I shoot out gold. <laughs> <laughs> There's a teenage elf filling your living room with gold coins. <laughs> Dora's gonna point at her and go, "Who that?" Why, Dora, don't you know me? It's your closest friend, for I am Zoe. <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. Zoe, you do, you do not, uh, you're not acting the way that I, I've not known you long, but this doesn't seem like you. Wild magic can be quite the bitch. I just did something, and now my vocal tics have switched. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, Zoe. <laughs> oh, Zoe, Zoe, Zoe. I, I, I'm glad that you are finding this well, because for me, this is eternal <laughs> hell. <laughs> Zoe! If it's all getting too much to your head, you can always just go up and rest in your bed. <gasps> this is beautiful, Zoe. <laughs> Zoe, are you enjoying being forced to be part of the pun squad? I want to... <laughs> I want to fucking like cast telekinesis and have Roland hit his head hit with a frying pan. Go ahead, do it. Is that real? <sighs> um. Oh man, I feel like I shouldn't. No, no, no. She's just gonna like glower at him angrily. <laughs> I fucked up too much already. The kitchen is filling with gold coins. Like it's gonna become an issue. <laughs> Can I swim in them like Scrooge McDuck? Of course. I'm really enjoying all of these puns. I get the sense you're not having such funs. <laughs> uh, do you want to put? Do you want to point your hands out the window or something so that we don't drown in coins? Sure, I guess. What's the bother? I'll be out here if you need me. Holler. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Um, this is good. It's good. So good. I'm just gonna let you all know. I'm kind of worried that. Um, it was a late night, night last night. I don't remember who brought it up, but someone suggested the possibility of uh, of Wolf being entangled in all this, and I'm now kind of worried that maybe Wolf might actually be Garrick the Great or something along those lines. I might be wrong, but um, yeah. So you're, you're suggesting we are suggesting we take him down to Wallop City. Look, I, actually, I don't think Wallop City is the way to go here. Look, so here's 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 what I know. I'm going to try and summarize what what Alice told me. Um, the impression that Alice gets, and she made a very strong case for this, is that Garrick the Great is not actually a wizard. We've been going down entirely the wrong track trying to find Garrick because we've been looking for someone who is adept at ice magic, who is um talented at creating all of these uh devices we're, that we're looking for someone who is magically talented and we might just be going down entirely the wrong mm. track there because of the nature of you know the building 
Garrick was in that is full of all of these magical tomes. Um, on top of that, this Garrick was apparently at the, the party that you were all at before I turned up, and none of the names that of people who attended that party stand out other than Wolf. And judging by sizes and the fact that you've not brought it up, I get the impression that Wolf as you know them did not turn up at this party, but they did accept an invitation. Even even if Wolf is not Garrick, I'm pretty sure that Garrick got their invitation from Wolf. I think that the way to go about this is not to storm Wolf with threats of violence as a group. No, no, obviously. The, the angle we're going to work with is that you're going to work with him because you already have an in with him. That That's my, my idea, is I go back under the pretense of, hey, we're just going to hang out and have fun. I try and talk to him casually if I need to. I'll do a big investiga- investigative deep dive in his brain and see if we can find any... Because he clearly knows Garrick the Great. He pointed us to the house. That's that's what I'm struggling to picture still, is if if Wolf was Garrick the Great, why would he have pointed us to the house and why would we? Why, how would we have caught Garrick off guard? While Ro- looking at the books, does Roland notice anything like like dirt or mud? On the pages. Um, no, those are just dusty old books that were left there. It doesn't seem like anybody has fussed with these or they have been subjected to the elements besides maybe just um, the humidity. He, he's, he, he's, not, he's not refuting what Veltari says. He's simply going to say, if Wolf was somehow connected in this, I doubt that he himself dealt with these books here. Uh, the, the more I say aloud, the less I think that he's actually Garrick, but he... But there's something connecting him to Garrick. Clearly, there's more to it. Wait a minute. Where did he say he get that amulet from? I don't think we ever asked. You guys asked him where he got the scarf. He said he stole it, and then he escaped to Ilium to get away from the mob that was trying to attack him because he stole it. No one has ever asked him what the amulet is or where he got it. Well, if there's any angle you can work then, Veltari, yeah. I would suggest starting with the amulet and work from there. Okay. Do you need someone to act like, do you want me to escort you, to act as if the Popo is escorting a prisoner? No, I, 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 think, I think the best thing I could do, honestly, is just, I promised him next time I had a day free, I would come back and spend some time with him. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't expect that to be interrogation. I meant to keep that promise. He seems like a pretty lonely guy that could just do with some friendship. I, I get what it's like to be to be ostracized for things that are sort of out of your control, but mm-hmm. like my intention wasn't to go back into an investigative mm-hmm. vein, but if I go back, I have I have my reason to go back is to go spend time with him. At the very least I can try and find out what the deal with the amulet is and what his ties to Garrika. Like I would suggest if we can if you guys can stay close enough that you are out of sight, but I can come with you as a cloud of mist. That that's that's feasible. Zoe's like gonna poke her head in through the door. She's gonna say, that one solution might be hard for me to do, because you should remember all the coins that I spew. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this lasts for the rest of the campaign. <laughs> um, yeah. How long can you be a cloud of mist, Dora? I think it's an hour. Yeah, it's an hour. It's an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to stick nearby as a cloud of mist just to go get help should it be needed? Yeah, defo. I'll be there. Oh, this is a really cool, exciting plan. I like this a lot. And I also think this season will be especially good on re-listen. Because, like, since there's so many mysteries, I think when you're re-listening to it, you'll get, like, those... Oh, you mentioned the amulet ten episodes ago and nobody said anything, and it's going to be really I cool. I already want to go back and listen to the episodes <laughs> that involve Wolf, because I'm now like, oh god, how many opportunities did I miss to, like, work out this Garrick thing and the amulet stuff while we were having friend times? There's a lot, there's a lot there that I think is going to be fun to dig into. Does anybody want to say anything else in this uh, scene before you guys carry out your daring mission next time hey zoe how you doing over there in the window i'm glad you find amusement in this magic 
Because now my life is truly tragic. <laughs> oh, so sad. It is so sad. It's like, it should be joyous. You just got a, a body that's almost the one that you started with. Like, this should be exciting for you, but you can't. <laughs> should be, but she's fucking has to rhyme everything. It, it's hard It's hard to engage this mission in stealth when all you're spewing out is wealth. That would be another line. Fuck. Of but you guys are all enjoying a good chuckle at Zoe's expense. Uh, when Zoe, who you have your hands out the window, you see uh, coming across the field towards your house, uh, Claudia Rock. Nice. And I think the, the last thing that happens in this episode is she's not alone. She has something with her, which is to say she's dragging a body. <gasps> oh, cool. And you see her first and she comes up and knocks on your guys' door. Uh, she With telekinesis, to be clear, she probably couldn't physically heft this body. Uh, but she knocks on your door, and you guys open it, and she says, uh, Hey, Dora, I was just on my way over, and I saw another one of your zombie guys. I shot him, took care of him for you. Um, but I noticed the symbol on his clothes, and I thought maybe you might be interested in this, Roland. And she drops the corpse on the floor of Avant-Garde's headquarters, and you see this very nicely dressed, re-killed... <laughs> zombie with a hole in its head is dressed in the ceremonial burial robes of the triad and Mm -hmm. you recognize this person like 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 roland like was holding one of the books when he when uh, claudia mentions his name he looks from the book sees like the body and without even seeing the face of it like he just drops the book and appears immediately shaken as he sort of gets up from his uh, from the table and starts to move over to to see who it is. So Roland is Baba Shook. <laughs> Damn it! I was gonna say that <laughs> and this, this episode started with everyone but Roland being Baba Shook, but it ends with Roland being Baba Shook. I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. <laughs> As always, I'd like to thank Overclock Remix for our theme music, including Acoustic Jam at the Lucifer Alpha, an arrangement of Biohazard from Snatcher, Simply Begrooved, an arrangement of Simple and Clean from Kingdom Hearts, and Mystic Chemicals, an arrangement of Mystic Cave and Chemical Plant Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog. Executive producers for June 2017 are Jade, Kerstine Haslinger, Extellaris, Joseph Timbrello, the Cult of Gorfanax, Irving Royale, Andrew Grothen, Paul Mullen, Finch DeYoung, Luke Powers, Michael Goodell, Brent, Sarah Likens, Pruitt Holcomb, Artemis BJJ, Martial Arts in Bristol, Francois V, Tarka, Melissa Nielsen, Shyness, Dennis Pancake Detlefson, Ripter Stormwolf, Miko from Finland, Dennis Bengston, Josh Mosier, Endigo Van Dane, James Bevan, Ellison Ansel, Sidney Marzing, Just a Jester, John Potts, Kevin Dobbins, Savarden Akrasimova, Carl, Brady Warner, Kitty Foe, James Neely, Eugene T, Marissa Donaldson, Melanie Joe, Lana Seawolf, Toby Gleason Stack, Ruby Offer, Matthew Weber, Sarah Henley, Melissa Booker, Cameron Abbas, Dylan, Gary Sayon, Anna Stuhlfarer, Sean the Host of Funk Dunk, Giorgio Renna, Harrison Andrew, Kevin Sidlow, Christopher Charlow, Jorit, Viger Arnston, Cody Jackson, August Rue, Athos, and Ingmar Gremen. You can join this list by supporting the show at patreon.com slash austinyorski, and you can support Chris and his artistic endeavors at patreon.com slash weekly manga recap, and you can find Laura at patreon.com slash Laura K Buzz. You can also help support the show by liking, commenting, and subscribing to us on Google Play, iTunes, YouTube, or Podbean, or anywhere else you found us. 
Are you pirating us right now? Are we on the deep web? If you're a cop, you have to tell me.